Hi, guys. Well, it is a snowy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It's just a normal winter day in uh, upstate New York. It is Friday the 13th. I just thought of that. It is, it, it, it is Friday the 13th of January 2023. It is our first Friday the 13th of the year, although every day of 2023 might be uh, Friday the 13th. But anyway, I have finally tracked this man down. Uh, th this is yep. my, uh, <laughs> what's the word to use for this guy? This is uh, Elliot Jacobson. Yeah, I'm your he has a course. YouTube channel called Climate Casino. He he's living out in Santa Barbara and, and one of the biggest climate events, certainly the biggest climate event of the year, we have no idea if this man is dead or alive. He hadn't put one word up on his own YouTube channel, Climate Casino, telling us whether he's dead or alive. But it uh, looks like the man is alive. We are very happy to hear that. So I'm just going to turn it over to Elliot and say, Elliot, what in the hell have you been up to in the year 2023? Living um, in Santa Barbara, yeah. California, brother. It's been quite a year so far. You know, we you came here, uh, you left us before Christmas, right? You left here. I left all Christmas night. I right. nailed it. I uh, went and to get the hell the, out of California. The weather was spectacular while you were here every day. It was glorious. It was. It was amazing. So you left, right? And ever, ever since you left, it's been like just you know trying to survive the elements here it's just been one thing after another and yeah we uh we had a little storm uh, uh you know it sort of peaked um monday into tuesday this last week today is friday so we're just digging our way out of it and we have another uh, one coming tomorrow we have a little kind of aftermath thing happening tomorrow it's not another big one up here it's really big up north so what we got uh earlier in the week was you know the the thing just aimed just a beeline right for santa barbara and it was essentially this this one single atmospheric river that that crossed the entire pacific ocean just aimed for us and just you know blasted us for about a day and a half straight uh but oh, right now on tuesday yeah, right now that's going on in Northern California. I don't I don't think it's quite as strong, but we're going to get a little tail end of this next one uh, in tomorrow. And then it should be clear. We should clear up and, uh, you know, it'll be beautiful again. But um, so, yeah, we um, started getting emergency alerts, uh, you know, Saturday into Sunday. We got emergency alerts again but last night, by the way. Um, you know, we had this Montecito, we had this Thomas fire in, in December 2017, and then these Montecito mudslides on uh, January 9th, 2018. That's five years and a couple days away. And those mudslides killed a bunch of people. I think it was 23 or something, you know, and, and there was like yards flooded with debris. And, you know, that one really made national news. That was a pretty intense little thing to go through. So um, they're really concerned that was going to happen again. Um so they were, you know, they've been working for five years to sort of prepare us for this this storm around here. Um, so yeah, at any rate, I I ended up I volunteered for um, local public health for a couple um, about a year. I, I know you're gonna love this. I were I volunteered at the vaccine clinics helping people get vaccinated, right? So somehow I was on their short list of um, people they were asking to come in and man the call centers. So in the middle of the storm, they're figuring they're, they're going to go, uh, you know, have these press conferences talking about what's going to happen. And they so they call me uh, and say, hey, could you come in and mount our phone lines for our emergency response? So it's not 911, right? It's more like um, just any question anybody has about anything. Where do you get sandbags? How long am I yeah. until the freeway opens? You know, whatever you could think of. What would I do with my dog? Um People would call in and ask. So, so um, the the day of the storm, I leave my wife and my home behind, and I head into the emergency uh, call center. You just you just leave. Take your body, your own home, and wife. And uh, honey, can you sandbag the house while I, I we go sit in a nice dry call center? <laughs> I have 30, sand, 30 plus sandbags up around my house. I just you know I. My whole yard is sandbagged uh, <laughs> against it, right? And uh, so I was just crossing my fingers that'll hold, um, leave leave my wife behind, go into this place. 
And from about 9 a.m. to uh, noon, got almost no calls whatsoever. Um, the the it starts raining. It starts raining harder, right? It starts, and there's this like this map that they put up that is uh, it tells you where to shelter in place. Like it's so bad, you shouldn't leave your home. Where to evacuate immediately? Where the evacuation warnings are. So there's this map, right? That that they have for everybody locally that are telling you essentially how bad is it where you live and what action should you take. And so as people start calling around noon because it's raining more and more and what should we do, uh, our local sheriff goes on uh, the news conference and says, Montecito, evacuate, right? 100% right now, evacuate your, your homes. Like if you are in Montecito, we need you to evacuate. Well, it's raining like crazy at this moment, right? All the roads are already, uh, many of them are impassable. The, the creeks have already, you know, and now it's flooding rain. And as he's saying this, he has the map behind him, you know, on the TV. Yeah. And the map that's behind him says shelter in place. <laughs> so, so he's telling everybody to evacuate. And the map says shelter in place. Now, I'm getting phone calls that are just saying, should I shelter in place or evacuate? You know, what? what's going on here? What was your advice? Well, I... I could not tell them, you know, my personal suggestion. But what I said is that the map has not yet been updated. You should evacuate. Okay. That's what our sheriff said you should do, right? You should evacuate right now to get out of your house, leave. Of course, I'm looking at like the traffic, you know, I, I, I have the updated um, um, Department of Transportation map with all the road closures, you know, all the accidents, all the everything that's wrong in every single place that, you know, you wouldn't normally have access to this, but because of what I was doing. Yeah, right yeah. And so I know I'm sending people out into like <laughs> rows that are going to be. Any way to evacuate Montecito is going to go right into. A... <clears throat> yeah. So at any rate, um, you know, some people were, were kind of upset. Some were like, well, I'm not going to leave. I'm like, okay, I'm just saying this is what the sheriff says you should do is leave. Well, I didn't help that Ellen DeGeneres was sloshing around in her backyard. I saw that. Yeah, with her video camera in the middle of an evacuate. You know. Well, she did get some good advice. She said, take care of the earth, everyone, or something like that in her video. There you <laughs> go. <rain's> coming up. <laughs> Any rate, so I was just dealing. It was the, the phone was off the hook for, for three hours. There were six of us in there, and I didn't stop talking for a couple hours, you know, three hours, four hours. And by about 4 p.m., I was just dead exhausted. Um, my shift was supposed to end at 5, and I couldn't make it. And so I said, so I said, look, I wake up early anyway. Um, can I go home now while it's still daylight so I don't have to drive in the rain? And uh, I'll come back at a 3 a.m. shift because they had a 3 a.m. shift, you know, the next overnight. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I just answered questions, you know, and a lot of the questions were things like, um, um, is my flight going to still take off this afternoon? So, you know, people are are asking if their flight is going to, um, and, you know, I'm like, have information that says, no, that's the airport, airport. I that's think the that's airport, airport, right? In the <laughs> middle of the storm. <laughs> like, no, your flight is not going to take well, off. Unless you're on a boat. I, I mean, your your boat could take off. Yeah, no, they did. So, so as all this is coming down, you know, they end up closing the airport, they closed the trains. They closed the freeways both directions, north oh, and really? south. Yeah. Um, they closed the, the harbor because of the waves and uh, there's some sand encroachment. So essentially, there's no way in of, to Santa Barbara and there's no way out of Santa Barbara. <laughs> and we're telling people to evacuate and all the, the hotels are full. And nobody set up an evacuation center quite well. We had one evacuation center that got kind of set up quickly and three more got set up over over some time. But um, yeah, so it was total chaos. And um, uh, here's just a couple of pictures. I'll just show you some aftermath pictures. You know, this is just flooding uh, right in downtown Santa Barbara and some of our roads I was sending people down. And, you know, this is one of the underpasses for a freeway and um, you know, where people were, you can see the car underwater there, and, you know, all of this stuff was just crazy. Um, 
just how bad it got, uh, how quickly, you know. Um, and just to give you some idea, these are the actual uh, rainfall numbers we got. Now, this is so a- Where is your house in the middle of this, on this map? So let me see if I can zoom in for a little bit. Um, so my house is right around um, the base of the cave fire here, right around where it says at 7.69. So we're looking at about eight, eight inches of rain here in uh, about 36 hours. The top of the pass right above us, um, it ended up getting uh, about a foot and a half of rain. Um, most it had ever gotten in a single day on record. And all, you know, all of the rain that's falling onto these mountains here is um, um, just going flowing directly into Santa Barbara. And the thing is that um, over here on this part, the lower right, this is Montecito where they were evacuating. You can see this big burn scar here, this fire that they had yeah. down there. So that's why they wanted people to evacuate because you know there, you got a foot of rain falling onto a burn scar so that, that uh, soil is not really prepared. It can't really hold the water that's coming down. So, but it did haul, right? Say what? It, but it did haul. There wasn't there wasn't any big landslide in, in, around your place. There wasn't huge landslides the way there was. But what they've done is they created these. They they um, where all the landslides happened in 2018. They created these debris basins. So essentially, these big holes in the ground, so that all the crap that last time sort of flowed through the neighborhoods. Ah. Uh -huh. Would get trapped in these basins instead and you know they spent five years doing this right and so we have a bunch of billionaires that live in montecito so obviously they could you know people wanted this to get done uh and and those you know three they had three of the major ones got filled to the top with with rocks and trees and you know everything else that five years ago would have flowed through the city and and uh knocked it out so uh, you know, the the uh, headline in the um, paper recently has been that, you know, that these basins held that they saved the city, you know, this time because they had done this work. So, you know, we don't we didn't have a, a catastrophic um, situation here. In fact, they're bragging that there was no injuries and no deaths at all from this. And, you know, I, I personally felt like I might have injured somebody just sending them, out, sending them out into the middle of the, you know, go get in your car and drive down this road in the middle of this stuff. You know, I'm telling them they have to do it. Um, so yeah. So that, how do you rate them? Uh, so how, it, it, it sounds like it could have been a hell of a lot worse. You, you know, I mean, clearly. Well, it, yeah, it could have been um, a lot worse, but you know, it's still, I've been, I've lived in Santa Barbara for 25 years and, and this, I've never seen anything like this, right? This is, this is, uh, you know, they, when they talk about the big one, um, you know, there's an earthquake in Santa Barbara, but there's also this idea of the big one in terms of a rainstorm, because the, um, the way the, these jet stream gets sort of lined up right over California coming across sort of the, the, you know, wettest part of the Pacific. It can just funnel water, it just gets going. Just, and that's what's going on right now. And even as we speak, you know, if you check the news right now, um, you know, there's this part of California called Monterey where they have like Carmel and Pacific yes. Palisades and, you know, uh, Pebble Beach and all those sorts Has of- Has it turned into an island yet? Well, that's the thing I'm saying is that they have the Salinas River. And, and yeah. so, you know, this thing can get completely cut off. I mean, just absolutely cut off. The Central Valley can flood. You know, the Central Valley of of the United of California can just turn into a big ocean. So, uh, you know, all these things are possible um, right now. So, we don't know. We won't really know what's going to happen in the next uh, couple of days. So, yeah. So you're not too concerned about what's coming in this weekend, at least as far south as you are. Oh no, I, yeah, we're over. I mean, I'm gonna take the sandbags up uh, on Monday right now. It, it's all done with, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, this is the thing. It's like these types of events um, are just happening now, right? These are just, this is just becoming 
like where do you live? You're gonna like in Buffalo when they had all the snow, right? And but uh, I was out in sunny California. Yeah, of course. I missed that one. I <laughs> how I dodged all of these bullets. It's unbelievable my timing. That that whole crazy story. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll, you know the next thing. Let me just like like very briefly on the three a.m. shift. That was you know pretty funny because like I kept on getting calls from people who were like. Um, I'm, I've been in my car overnight in the Vons parking lot. Um, <laughs> you know, when is 101 going to open up so I can go home? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Go anywhere but the parking lot of Vons. You know, go to a Denny's or something, you know. Have a, ham have a hamburger. Um, but, you know, another one was... Um, do I have to go to work today? Somebody said. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know whether you know you could just say a free day for work. Today is a free day for all jobs. Um, so you know it was kind of interesting. On the next morning, um, there was a lot of people just asking when things were going to open, which you know you don't know that because get back to normal. Uh, but so we're on the men now, and uh, I think we're done with this. You know, the next thing that's going to happen, of course, is this El Nino, right? I mean, this is the big climate thing that's coming down the uh, pike right now. And, and um, you know, the, the El Nino, in some way, this is the, the kind of uh, storm you would normally get in an El Nino year when it's, you know, the ocean is superheated. Uh, and the wind is sort of blowing over the yeah. um, equatorial in our direction and driving all that heat to the surface. And we get these sorts of storms. And so the brand new hot off the press uh, report is that we might get an El Nino later this year, which um, you know could very well mean that the storms that we saw this year happen next year, you know, even more so because this is a very normal sort of El Nino event. So, yeah, so that's, a, so if you add an El Nino, I mean, so having a storm like this in a non El Nino year, that's kind of, I've, I've been hearing this conversation about the oceans are hotter than they've ever, they've absorbed more heat than ever in history. They're hotter than 2022 is the hottest oceans of any year in history. And it wasn't an El Nino year. So, I mean, this, this I is mean what does that mean for what it is? That you, you know, it's what Lord. we're going to find out very soon. But, but, you know, for people out there who kind of understanding, don't understand what you're talking about. It's like we have heat is coming into the planet all the time, right? The solar rays yeah. being trapped from bouncing back out by these greenhouse gases. And so that's heating up the, the planet, right? Well, where does that heat go? Well, you know, 90% of it goes into the oceans. So what's happening during a La Nina year is that that heat is not at the surface. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's being driven down yeah. under the, the water along the sort of um, parts of the uh, Pacific Ocean where normally the trade winds would determine um, the storms, which, what where the storms are going to end up. So all of that heat that we've been sort of burying into the ocean for three years during La Nina, right? All of this massive amount of heat that's been just heating up the oceans and heating up the oceans has also allowed the rest of the planet not to heat up as fast, which is why 2022 is like the fifth hottest year, you know, on record, right? So, I mean, when this thing comes to pass, all of that heat is just going to, I have no idea, but it is going to be hot. It's going to be just unbelievably hot uh, next year or the, you know, later this year. And we'll just have to see what that means. But um, yeah. yeah I can already see the, the stories next spring about all this, the, this rain there's on one hand, which I want to talk about a minute about the good news out of it, but I can see all of this fuel being with all of the you know sagebrush and all of this stuff that's going to explode uh but over the next six months or well, four to six months and then all that's just going to dry out and, and we're and you're going to have an unbelievable fuel load 
uh, which yeah. is going to be like, it, uh, obviously, going to be like gasoline just waiting for one uh, lightning strike. And do you think th that this could actually, uh, are, are you predicting reading these stories in six months about all of the extra fuel from all of that rain is uh, creating uh, th these horrific fire events in the summer of 2023? So, you know, it's interesting you say that um, because when I was on my walk today, I was noticing how green the grass was. Yeah, already. Yeah. Things are already blooming around here. You know, yeah. it's, it's the second week of January and you know, it looks like it's early April. So whatever is doing that, it's crazy how fast stuff is growing right now. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a record year for these grasses and, you know, just low lying shrubs. Um, that stuff burns really hot and fast. It's um, it's hard to control that. It's not like a forest fire, the old trees, right, where you don't have the same grasses right in there, a grass yeah. fire, a forest fire, kind of different animals. Um, but um, it's definitely we're going to have a lot of low lying fuels uh, right around where I live. For sure, that's going to be an issue. You know, we haven't had we haven't had a good fire here now in five years. So, you know, we'll see what happens. You just uh, can't win. Um, well, obviously, the other the, the other you know trying to make uh, lemonade out of lemons. The big debate, and and you're of course you're already hearing on Fox News. Obviously, they're going to be the first ones to start reporting that there is no more drought in, in California. Anybody who begins to squeak that is going to go right up to the top of the headlines at Fox. You're not hearing it on HuffPost yet. But where are you weighing in? Uh, is this, I, I, it, it looks to me like the, the reservoirs actually in California filled up because of this. Uh, so that's good news. But is this going to dent the drought or is it not in, in your reading of the tea leaves? It's such a, thing, a funny thing for you to say that's good news, because essentially what good news means is that we can continue to develop and, and grow the yeah. population and the economy, which is like the worst news. Well, <laughs> um, of course, that's a, you know, it's the Fox News agenda. It's got, OK, that's the end of that drought. Uh, are you doomsaying? Uh, just go back, shut up. Uh, every, look at these green hills around here. Uh, go up there, enjoy your ski vacation until through April. And uh, it's actually being spun as a good news story. End of drought. Right. So, um, you know, the, the problem is there, there's a couple of problems with this. The first is that... Um, the water that's coming in here while it's going to the reservoirs, it isn't really getting down to the, um, you know, the aquifer. And the problem oh. is that, you know, in the Central Valley, they've been sucking water out of sort of this, this layer of, of water that sits, it used to sit about 50 to 100 feet down, and now it's like 1,200 feet down. But as they've been sucking water out, like the, the way that that stores water is kind of porous, collapses, right? When there's no water to sort of keep the layers apart, you get the sort of collapsing of the soils so that you can't really get water back in there um, yeah. from you know these storms. It's not like it's replenishing the aquifer in any real way. So, I mean, that's one of the problems. The other problem is that, you know, while these sort of local um, aqua, these local reservoirs are all nice to have and they'll give you, you know, another year or two or maybe three, you know, worth of buffer based on these storms because now they do have a lot more water. I mean, what it really comes down to when you um, want to know about things, it is what is Lake Mead doing, right? And Lake Mead is the one that, um, let me just see if I can get this for you. Has the rain moved that far east? And that's going to be more dependent well, on the snowpack. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. What feeds Los Angeles? What feeds San Diego? What feeds Tucson and Phoenix and parts of New Mexico, right? Or Lake Powell and Lake Mead, which are dependent on the snowpack uh, you know that that takes place in Colorado and and yeah, Mar that's rocky. But the Sierra, the, does the Sierra Mountain snowpack feed any? You know my question. I, I mean, yeah. what what does it feed when well, it starts to melt? 
Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure how much of the Sierra goes down the eastern side and drains into um, this uh, Lake Mead. Um, you know, primarily that's coming from further east, uh, yeah. as far as I know. But if you actually look down at the bottom of this little map, you, you can kind of see that in 2023, Lake Mead water level has gone from 1,044.96 up to a uh, a, a thousand and forty five point three four. So it's keened about a third of a foot. Right. So <laughs> it's this water is not going where yeah. it's really needed to sustain these huge population centers in Southern California uh, and Phoenix and those sorts of areas. Um, and it is getting kind of sucked out over the Sierras, which is why there's a desert on the other side of the Sierras. Right. Why this is why we have Death Valley, because the Sierras take all the water out of these storms. So, you know, very little of it, from my understanding, is actually um, going towards the the um, Colorado Rockies. Yeah, the Colorado into the Rockies and the larger snowpacks. But it doesn't mean that these sort of these local reservoirs aren't doing great, which they are from this. So I don't know whether that uh, kind of answers your question or well that's m mostly the good news is, is the uh, there's some limited good news but you don't see I I anyone to be n n now of course what they i think the third biggest story on the planet is they were showing the uh drought monitor for california on january 1st versus uh january 10th uh, you know, it was a bright red screaming alarm on January 1st. And now it just looks like it, 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 so there's like no exceptional drought in the state of anywhere in the state of California or 97% of Cal is out of exceptional drought now. You know, it's kind of bad news in its own way because uh, it just means more growth, right? It just means more humans doing more stuff to destroy the planet around here. And, you know, our, there, there is this uh, state mandate that cities create a certain number of new housing units. You know, we do have this uh, problem with the homeless here in the state. So I think we're supposed to create 8,000 more units in Santa Barbara by next year. We had like five or 10 years to do it and we're supposed to get 8,000. We just have a few hundred that we've created, right? So. I mean, what this means is that we cannot use lack of water as an excuse to say, oh, we don't have enough water for this this, yeah. this, this housing, right? Because we do at least temporarily have that again. Um, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't wrap my head around how these sorts of decisions are made, but um, I don't, I don't really think being out of the drought makes us any less, um, in trouble, you know, as far as as just what we're going to, uh, what's ending up. Um, Sam, I I want to shift this focus just a little bit. I want to shift it onto you, but before I get there, I wanted to show you one thing and have you comment on it. Okay. Do I need to put my glasses on? Is this something I need to look at? Uh, you you might want to look at this. I I uh, right. I just want to ask you. Um, so this is based on some uh, research I've been doing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what you think about this exactly, but, uh, you know, not where I, we are. Yeah, I, I, I kind of don't. I know you have this T-shirt you wear, uh, but I, I don't have us there yet. I have us somewhere between pretty effed and sorry we're effed. Um, I know your T-shirt is already putting us past the sorry we're effed line here. No, so, this t-shirt was, uh, oops, uh, maybe you can't see it because of my weird background. Uh, let's see, a little bit, pretty much, so, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, we're pretty much in agreement on, on this line. Uh, so 2050, we're past sorry, but we haven't hit totally. 
So right. you have us now. It looks to me like you have us hitting totally on about March seventeenth, twenty seventy four at five oh four p.m. That was my my intent. I might have the scale off just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, I uh, the... so it's uh, I, I I do think you have the trajectory. Uh, okay, pretty, pretty well. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 liking that. The only thing. I might have lowered the sorry line a little closer to A little to closer pretty. to now. Yeah. A little closer to pretty. Yeah, okay. Um <laughs> think, <laughs> thank all you. of all, I, I think that I think that's fair. And uh so it sounds like you and I are in agreement whenever anybody asks us, the, you know, when is now now my newest t-shirt. And I want to thank Katie for uh, sending me all these. She sent me, uh, she's the one who sends me all these t-shirts. Uh, we have the end is near and with near crossed out. So according to this t-shirt, we're already at March uh, 17, 2074, according to this shirt maker. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, we shouldn't be here. If the end is here, then we shouldn't be here to to know that the end is here, but uh, as long as you as long as you can buy an end is near T-shirt on Amazon.com, you know all of these shirts. It's unbelievable how many people ask me where to get these shirts. You just go to Amazon. You can just you know, type I read, it. where the hell do you get anything on the entire planet? You got. I, I mean, I, I love being able to go on Amazon.com and get all your Doomer supplies. Whether you can. I know, I looked it up. I, I I looked. I said, I wonder where Sam got this. I typed that in, and Amazon's like, it's got different colors, even. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they got T-shirts, bumper stickers, coffee mugs, uh, every every conceivable combination of uh, of, of Doomer swag uh right there uh and amazon will deliver your doomer swag uh right to your door and, and i think that's a perfect comment on uh where we are on your red line uh the fact that amazon amazon.com will deliver you or sorry we're we're fuck t-shirt it's right. uh what what could be more poetic than that <clears throat> right we 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 are having the organizations that are doing the um, fuckery actually being the ones delivering the items saying yeah I, I mean it's uh I, I mean it's just uh, what what is a good uh That's, yeah there's gotta be a good uh comparison to amazon.com delivering to your house uh sorry we're fuck t-shirt yeah. It's a I, I just have to think. Uh, I'm not fast enough on my feet to think of uh, that's that's the same. You, you know, because it's, it's uh, Sam, how about this? It's the Doomer snake eating its own tail. It's the, yeah, there you go. Snake, there, there you the go. Snake of Doom eating its tail. So Sam, you have you have a project you are working on, and I just want I want to I got some pictures I want to show, but why don't you uh, lead me into the pictures and tell everybody what you're doing. Yeah, well, I am not having nearly the exciting, uh, nearly the exciting week that Elliot has. I am house sitting. I am snowbound uh, house sitting for my dear friend Sandy Shellas from Environmental Coffee House. So somehow she browbeat me into uh, into house sitting here instead of house sitting in Austin, Texas, where it's eighty one degrees today and bright blue sun. But I am uh, completely uh, bouncing off the walls. I am. I, I mean, I am kind of like uh, what was Jack Nicholson's character in The Shining? I'm about. Uh, I, I'm about three days away from red rum, if if you know what that means. I'm, I'm yeah. right at borderline red rum, and so avoid, uh, avoid the mazes. Avoid the corn mazes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I get the hell out of here. I've got, I've, I guess I've got four more full days. So I'm getting out of here on Wednesday and, and not stopping till I hit Belize here in a couple of weeks. But what I've been doing just to pass the time and, and keep myself from going uh, full shining is uh, 
I wrote this book way back in 2009 about my adventures in Peru in the Peruvian Amazon, kicking a, a big oil out of the Peruvian Amazon back in 2009. And this book is it's an ebook called Peruvian Plunge. And it's just been languishing uh, uh, on the internet on lulu.com is where you can find it. So anyway, it's been sitting there for, I think in 14 years, I think I've sold about 200 copies of this book in 14. It costs $5, by the way. I think I've sold about 200 copies in 14 years. So what I have done is have given myself as I say, just to keep myself from going crazy, I've actually decided to make a, a, an audio book uh, out of Peruvian Plunge. This thing is 250 pages to oh. the, uh, there it is. There so, it is. Yeah, I'm going to show, there, now there's a problem with this book. Um, I, I don't know uh, exactly what this is, but this is this is um, your, your page on lulu.com. And Peruvian plunge, and what is this Hambone Little Tail? Well, see, is that this is, this is the other uh, thing that has has cropped up in the, and I've already done my video, so at this point, so the the author of the book is this Hambone Little Tail character, and with all of these uh, now three thousand new subscribers, I've gotten to Collapse Chronicles. This dude, Hambone Little Tail, uh, has been outed, basically. So I just went ahead and, and said to hell with it. I'm, I'm going to admit that I have this alter ego named Hambone Little Tail over on this channel called Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So I do have this kind of shadow channel going on behind Collapse Chronicles. And since Hambone Little Tail is the author of Peruvian Plunge, I'm uh, so if if you want to hear me just read this and see what I've been doing this week, you can find it over there. You have to go to Humpty Dumpty Tribe uh, to hear it. So what I am doing. So, so I've never heard of this Humpty Dumpty Tribe before. This sounds fascinating. I think everybody should. Uh, I, uh, I I I. Sam Mitchell has no control over him on Little Tail. All right. Okay, guys, the the dude is completely out of control. So uh you see what is what do we have a picture of? We have a picture of is that Sancho Panza? It is, yeah. So so look, he, so, a, he is pissing on a wildfire, I guess. So but, here is this um Hambone yeah. Little Tail reading this book, Peruvian Plunge. Yep, there. that's what I've been doing, and good Lord, I'm going to put out, I'm, I'm doing two chapters a day, and there's 28 chapters, so that's four, it'll take two weeks, I think we're up to chapter, and I've just put out chapter, well, there's a preface, and then I, if, if I was telling my friend yesterday, if 12 people make it to the end of this book, uh in the next two weeks I, I will be shocked if 12 people on a planet of 8 billion but anyway what it is is the, is the tale of my uh summer that i spent in the peruvian amazon in in, in 2009 so so this is a picture of, of hambone right yeah that was me in 2009 what is it you can't tell was supposed to be the cover of the book and I don't know how hard it would be to make this to cover photo. But what I am, this, this tree that you can't tell what this is a picture of. Where I am in this picture is I am 11 stories up a tree. I am 110 feet up a Kapok tree in uh, the Peruvian Amazon. So you're, it's a... And I'm just sitting on this tree branch. If I were to step, what, 16 inches to, to my right or my left, I would fall straight down to my death, 110 feet. And that that's actually a branch. That's just one branch leading out from the tree. 
Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell. It looks like I'm sitting on a log on the ground, but it's uh, so that's what it looks like. Uh, back up to that canopy shot. That's what it looks like. Uh, there you go. So when you're looking down, that's what you're seeing. That That is the canopy of the rainforest. Now, these Kapok trees are what's called an emergent tree, and they literally emerge from the main canopy. So that stuff you see all of the greenery is about 50 feet below me i would say four or five stories below me and it's the canopy of the rainforest is where all of the action is it, it it's unbelievable on the on the floor of the jungle how little life there is this is where the action is it, it is up in the canopy so uh, you have, but you have to get up. They had a tower built there. Uh, you have to get up on top of the Amazon rainforest and look down on it to really get an appreciation of what's being destroyed. Uh, you, you, it's heartbreaking enough from the ground level, but until you get a Above it, and you look out. I mean, as far as you can see, that this unbroken green canopy. I mean, every single tree is its own ecosystem. Uh, just the absolute heartbreak of this whole situation. It was literally in that tree uh, where I became a doomer. So I talk oh, about. Yeah. I became a uh, so, and I think in chapter thirteen or. Anyway, you have to, I haven't put it out yet, but you, I, I actually talk about the day that uh, I that I became a doomer. I also talk about uh, that was the summer of that big massacre in Peru, and uh -huh. which no one remembers anymore in Bagua when the government killed all of those uh, Indians, all of those Amazon Indians down there yeah. who had blocked an oil pipeline. So it was also uh, the summer where I disabused myself of the myth of the noble savage that people get so pissed off at me about. Uh, so I, I used to uh, I used to suffer from the myth of the noble savage as much as anybody on the planet, okay? But I, once I actually went and spent several weeks living with uh, Indians in the, uh, well, I assure you, you cannot go to, to, to the Amazon rainforest and hang out with a bunch of Indians and come out of that with the myth of the noble savage. They're, they're people. They're, they're, they're people like anybody else. Uh, I, I think it's actually... I think it's a little bit insulting and racist to try to put these people like any, any, anyone else on the planet because it, it separates them. You know what I'm saying from uh, yeah, the rest yeah. of humanity. Yeah. I mean, people are people, dude. That's that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it, it's really, you can look at any person in any culture and you can see that any any genetics that anybody yeah. is born with can be acculturized to any culture they're yeah. raised in, right? So there is there is nothing genetically that <laughs> predisposes a person to somehow um, live in harmony with with nature and be kind to others and to never be a warring, you know, uh, psychopath. Uh, right? it, yeah, nothing uh, the, the, in anybody's genetics that says these people are that way. And, you know, those people aren't that way. So, um, I mean, and as far as the cultures themselves, they used whatever resources they could, they, they used whatever tools they could to, uh, prolong their lives and, and, um, prolong the people that were in their communities. I mean, we're a tribal, um, type of creature, right? We are a monkey. So we live in our little 
clans. Well, Jared Diamond's guns, guns, germs, and steel. Uh, uh, anybody who really is interested in the myth of the noble savage and disabusing themselves of the notion, Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. Another excellent book. And uh oh, uh, is it did Ronald Wright write fourteen ninety one? 1490, 1491 and Guns, Germs, and Steel would be the two, m my two biggest recommendations. It to, looks like, um, like uh, 1491 was written by someone named Charles Mann. How does that Oh, yeah, Charles Mann. Yeah, Charles right. Mann. I, uh, Ronald Wright was a short history of progress. If you haven't read a short history of progress, uh, that, that really sums up, well, just as the book says, takes about two hours to read a short history of progress from cover to cover. Great book for anyone just starting their way down here. So anyway, guys, if you just want to hear my uh, nose, eyes, and feet on the ground adventure going down there uh, and, and seeing for myself. Now, of course, that was 14 years ago, and I don't even want to think I don't even want to think about the level of destruction. And if, if I were to go back there now, uh, after what I saw, and uh, I mean, j j just even trying to imagine what uh, what I would see down there, yeah. it's yeah. just really, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I don't want to make. I don't want you to think the book is all one big downer. I. I, well, people, uh, people should start listening to you. Yeah, uh, I, I have you some know fun. right away, and and uh, they'll make up their minds. I mean, in the meantime, you won't go absolutely crazy being there all by yourself for the next few days. And it should and, fill up, and you uh, won't go all red rum on us because you'll be busy <laughs> uh, recording these videos. And you know that makes that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing you're doing it, if nothing else, for your own mental health. And you know, people yeah. should. If you if you are out there suffering from climate anxiety or climate grief, right? Start a YouTube channel and start reading stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, do, it's it's really hard, uh, not hard at all to just put a little, uh, you know, video camera on yourself and start talking to people, and it can be your own therapy, you know. And in some cases, um, like like my friend over here, I you might be down there, or you might be up there. I'm not quite sure, but. Uh, you know, it, it turns into something um, that is a great chronicle of, of what's been going on now for what, 14 years, right, with with our our world. And, and it can uh, just have more and more value for for other people as well. Yeah. Um, so Humpty Dumpty tribe is where I am going to be uh, when I'm actually down in the Yucatan and Belize I don't know what the internet is going to look for, going to look like down there, but any dispatches over the next few weeks from down there are going to be posted on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, not on Collapse Chronicles. I, I don't want I don't want Collapse Chronicles to be about me. Uh, so anything like any stories about my life and the, you, you know, and this story from Peru and my upcoming journey, if you have any interest in, uh, Sam Mitchell or his, uh, evil twin Hambone Littletail, I'm putting all of that stuff over on, uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So I honestly don't know what Collapse Chronicles is going to look like between like January 27th and March 3rd, but I will be updating folks. But anyway, that's yes, about yeah. it. So uh, we probably have uh, lost about 90% of our audience. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I, I think next time we have to uh, schedule one of these for when we both have an exotic beverage in our hand. And you know, yeah, we want to talk about carpe diem. So maybe next yeah. week, before I head off, we will uh, come back and have a and 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 Elliot and I are going to have a friendly debate about our ideas of get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Uh, right, but not at the expense of. of so that's Others. another discussion for a uh, another day. What oh. out there and enjoy it while you still can. And I wish I could say I was going to get out there and enjoy this snowy, slushy 
it is now 26 degrees where I am. And, uh, but I'm going to oh. go back to Peru right now. I went out and enjoyed it while I could this morning. I went for about a five mile walk. I'm going to do it again tomorrow morning before the rain comes. Um, rain. Now, do you know how much I have walked in the last 14 days? Well, we did a five mile walk together one day when you were. If here. I have walked one half a mile in the last 14 days, I would be shocked. Uh, I have gotten less exercise in the last 14 days than any 14 day a period in my entire life. Okay, so you are welcome to come back to California <laughs> anytime you want. I've probably gained 15 pounds we, we, in the dead Bigfoot. So anyway, maybe we can talk next week. So guys. Uh, yeah, this has been great. And uh, uh, we'll just see everybody the next time we, uh, you and I get together and do one of these sort of crazy videos. So hey, everyone, for Sam Mitchell, Collapse Chronicles, and Elliot Jacobson from Climate Casino, We'll see and you all Sancho later. Panza. All right. I'm Sancho too. All right. Yes. All right. All right. We'll see y'all later, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.